Welcome to the General Chemistry Laboratory. Over the next several weeks, you will be spending quite a bit of time in this lab, so it is important for everyone to be on the same page when it comes to the safety rules of the lab. Make sure you wear appropriate clothing to lab. Do not wear your favorite or expensive clothes to the lab. They may be damaged by highly corrosive chemicals, stained by dyes, or strong oxidizing agents. All students must wear closed-toed shoes that cover their entire foot. Pants that cover their entire leg are also required. This is a common area left exposed by students, so make sure that you are wearing appropriate clothing that does not leave the skin at your ankles exposed. T-shirts are recommended for lab, but long sleeve shirts are okay. Your sleeves may need to be rolled up at times though. Tank tops are not allowed. Your shirt must be long enough to cover your midsection at all times, and anyone with long hair is required to pull their hair back into a ponytail while they are in the lab. Safety glasses are the most important piece of safety equipment that you are required to provide. Students are required to be wearing their safety glasses at all times in the lab. There are no exceptions. If you wear corrective lenses, it is preferred that you wear glasses rather than contacts to lab, but contacts are acceptable. If something does get into your eye, glasses are much easier to remove than contacts and your eye can be washed at the eye wash station much sooner. This will help reduce the damage to your eye. Nonetheless, you should be wearing your safety glasses at all times. If you are wearing inappropriate attire to lab, you will be asked to go home and change or you will not be allowed to participate in the lab that day. Backpacks, coats, and other personal belongings should be stored in the cubbies throughout the lab. When these things are left on the floor, they are tripping hazards and can be dangerous. Make sure you get something to eat or drink before lab because there are no foods or drinks allowed in the lab, and there are no exceptions. All students must be aware of where the safety equipment is in the lab and how to use them. See the lever on the right hand side and the metal shower head coming out of the ceiling? This is the safety shower. In case of toxic or corrosive chemicals being spilled on you, it is important to remember that this is no time for modesty. In order to prevent serious injury, you must remove your clothes and shower off for at least 15 minutes by standing under the shower head and pulling the lever. The TA will provide you with extra clothing and escort you to the student health center afterwards. There are two eyewash sinks in each lab. If you get anything in your eyes, you must remove your safety glasses and your contacts if you are wearing any. Turn on the water and rinse your eyes until the burning subsides. Then go for a while longer to ensure that you get everything out. If there are any small spills in the lab, make sure to inform the people around you and clean it up immediately with a paper towel. For larger spills, inform the people around you and get your TA. It may be necessary to use the chemical spill kit. The chemical spill kit contains several useful items for the lab, including an extra pair of lab goggles, antiseptic wipes, burn cream, a dustpan and broom used for broken glass, band-aids for small cuts or abrasions, some heavy-duty gloves, drying powder for large spills, and a lab coat to keep your clothing clean while cleaning up large spills. Broken glass should be disposed of in the designated broken glass container located in each lab. Throwing broken glass in the trash is dangerous and could be harmful to others. It is important to be able to read caution and warning signs on all chemicals used in the lab. If a container is not labeled, do not assume what it is. The results of using an unmarked container could be deadly, so never assume anything. There are two different types of safety label you will see in the lab. This is the NFPA diamond found on most chemicals. Each colored region represents a different chemical hazard on a scale from 0 to 4. The blue region represents health hazards, with 0 being normal material, 1 slightly hazardous, 2 hazardous, 3 extremely hazardous, and 4 being deadly. The red region is flammability hazards and flashpoints. Zero will not burn. One will burn above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Two will burn above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but not exceeding 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Three, below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And four, below 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The yellow region represents the chemical's reactivity. Zero means the chemical is stable. One, the chemical is unstable if it is heated. 2. The chemical may undergo a violent chemical change. 3. The material may be explosive if a shock or charge is passed through it. And 4. The material may detonate. The white label is the only label that is not scored on a numerical chart. 
There are several symbols that may go into this region to represent specific hazards such as OX for oxidizer, acid for acidic materials, ALK for alkali or basic chemicals, COR for corrosive chemicals, a W with a line through it to indicate the chemical should not be used with water, and the radiation symbol if the chemical is radioactive. Chemicals may also be rated by their reactivity, toxicity, flammability, and corrosiveness by the GHC pictograms. These pictograms display pictures representing the type of chemical hazards present. And that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you for taking the time to watch this safety video. I want to wish you the best of luck this semester on your experiments. Have a good one.